Welcome to the captain's chair. This is the captain speaking. It's star date uh, 0701122022. And uh, it is, uh, you have not turned tuned into a, a star, star Trek podcast. This is actually just uh, binary jazz. Uh, this is my new if you're watching, which you're probably not, because it's a podcast, and most people don't watch podcasts, but every once in a while, one person will click on it for about five minutes and uh, or less, uh, and maybe leave a comment that says, great. Um, and if you are that person, you will see that there is a new background uh, behind me. Uh, but if you are not, then just imagine me, and imagine all of us, really, uh, traversing the galaxy in a spaceship uh, shaped like a bumblebee. Uh, it's binary jazz. Uh, there are three of us. I am one. Uh, I'm jazz secrets on the <laughs> internet. I'm Chris in the, in real life. There is uh, number two. My number two, uh, is Gary binary Gary, uh, on the internet. Uh, and number zero, um, is, is Allison plus, um, uh, who is, who is Allison in real life. Uh, and this is a show where we just talk about some shit, and sometimes Allison brings us a topic, and we try to uh, figure out what that topic might be. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's 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 the that's the gig. You can send in your topics or questions to us uh, by going to the website binaryjazz.us, and there's a contact form there, or you can hit us up on Twitter binary at binaryjazz. Not binary at binary jazz. Just, just that too. Oh yes. <laughs> we have a visitor today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, open introduce access, our guest. Open access means that I I might get visitors. This is uh, Juniper. Um, oh. She is our youngest cat. Um, hold on, Juniper. She looks like she's figuring out some of the wall angles. <laughs> Oh. oh my goodness. I want to hug it, that cat. She is a very loud purr, but she's not doing it right now. She's mm. more interested in you. Look at that. She's like, what is on the screen? I met two cats on Saturday night. Some friends of ours. We went over to their house for dinner. My sister-in-law watched the cage, which was kind of magical. We had like 21 hours without our children. 21 hours? Yeah. Who's very, counting? Very uh, specific amount of time. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so I met, they have a beautiful long hair named Rex. And then they have uh, Bo, who is like the, in oh, <laughs> Bo is the inverse of Rex, like color wise, like black with like a white spot. Juniper is white with a black spot, but then an extra black spot on the head. But both lovely, sociable, beautiful cats. I haven't had a cat on a call in a while. Look at that. This is the part of the show where uh, <laughs> we just quietly uh, watch uh, watch my cat for a few minutes. <laughs> you know what? That's how the world is going right now. <laughs> this is the most peaceful moment I've had in weeks. <laughs> it's sort of a it's kind of ASMR, which is mm. uh, binary jazz uh, related. So. Uh, before the call, uh, I had to make it a point to pull out my uh, my Ganesh uh, to remove obstacles, uh, mm. and my my Buddha uh, to remind me to stay focused and calm and put them on my desk because they had not made it to the desk yet. Mm -hmm. um, Monday, yeah. and you need Monday. all this. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also oh my gosh so <laughs> it it's a spacecraft like it really looks like it. yes i want an office with no gravity no work would get done gary that's true who cares <laughs> at that point. yeah that's true there's that point hmm how is everyone doing we haven't spoken in person well, I guess we haven't <laughs> spoken in Zoom in person yeah. in uh, two weeks, in two weeks. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, it's been okay. It's been it's been a little bit uh, hectic around here with uh, closing on a house and moving, uh, and um, yeah. The and the old house is sold as well. No. Oh. No, we need to sell the old house because mm -hmm. we do not want to pay the mortgage on this mm -hmm. house um, without having first put that money on this mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Aaron's actually over there right now painting. Uh, we need to paint that place. We um, have a contractor that's hopefully going to start this week to update the kitchen. Um, I just got in touch with... Um, uh carpet people um to replace the carpets in the kids rooms which are just trashed um and then and then we still have a, a few like just little things um over there like probably like i mean it you, you think it's like a day's worth of moving but like a lot of it is just like random shit and so it's all this little stuff um you know aaron and i's closet is about half empty um just just a, a whole lot of little stuff and then there's a whole bunch of stuff downstairs it just needs to be pulled out and then put in a big trash pile um so there's still some stuff that needs to be done and we're hoping to get it done in the next couple of weeks and and then list as quickly as we can um, gotcha i wasn't sure like what the where the market is these days like if you could do bad. the old like <laughs> oh you can't do the old like list it and be like you didn't get to like send an inspector Here's seven um, pictures. Good luck. I mean, we'll see. It's it's there's still there's still a a uh, a a shortage of houses, but there are essentially there are fewer buyers because people are being scared off by the rising uh, interest rates, mm -hmm. um, and just deciding not to do the stupid thing that we did. Someone has to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Musical no, I, chairs. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's someone's holding the bag with extra houses. The thing is, the thing is that Utah and Salt Lake City in particular has been getting for years lots of um, uh, transplants from other places because Utah is and continues to be far cheaper uh, to live if your job allows you to work remotely um, than than anywhere else. And while still having a like tech presence uh seeing good food like a downtown um and our old house is is you know five minutes from downtown so um it's is it, it walkable to downtown it's it's i would say it's just outside of what i would consider to be walkable to downtown Got it. but there's public transportation and there's you know stupid scooters all over the place it wouldn't take long to get to downtown what a weird branding choice that is yeah Stupid, stupid. I mean, I mean, it. Are you? You could. It's not wrong. We're we're we're. So I would say the the north edge of downtown is where the temple is, and the temple is definitely you could definitely walk to the temple. And by the temple, I mean the Salt Lake City, yeah, temple of the Church of the Jesus Christ and Latter Day Saints <laughs> people. It's quite the collective, isn't it? yeah yeah um but like that that's sort of like that sort of marks like kind of the northern boundary of what is considered to be downtown and you could definitely walk there from from the house um and Many you can walk ago. to the capital from the down from downtown too if you want to go protest the church of jesus christ and latter-day saints <laughs> their involvement <laughs> it's, in only, it's not the same building but yeah no there's an underground it's... tunnel connecting the two <laughs> You know, um, so originally in Salt Lake City, there, there, so there's a, the city, the city count, no, the building that is used, <laughs> the, the building that is used for city hall. I feel is, like I just watched Chris short circuit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the building that is used as, as city hall for city council meetings uh, was, I believe the former Capitol building. Mm. And on that building, when they built it, they built it to be to essentially rival the temple to the point that they put a little statue, golden statue, on the highest spire to be uh, to 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 sort of not 
mirror, but to sort of like contrast the statue of Moroni, which is uh, the, the, I guess, saint uh, that is on top of the Salt Lake City Temple. Uh, and really all major temple temples, not wards, but temples. Um, you said Moroni? Moroni. I mm-hmm. actually know what Moroni is the saint of. Oh? Americanized Italian food. <laughs> Um, (laughs) uh, and they did that because they wanted to explicitly create a, they didn't want the temple to outshine, uh, sort of city politics essentially, or state, you know, state politics. They want, they wanted it to be distinct and, and equal and rival to, um, and there was a big conflict, uh, uh, when it was built about between sort of church and state. Um, and, and that was represented when they built the temple. So it's, so, so the, the original, so that, that building is a really old, really nice looking building, uh, that, that, yeah, kind of does look like a, like the temple. So yeah, oh. it's, 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 it's the, the underground tunnels, um, probably don't exist because there has been this historic, like, no, you can't get those two things involved, but like, it's more in words than, <laughs> and than actions because obviously, and like most of, you know, Utah yet legislature is, is LDS. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's underground tunnels at Disneyland, if that's any consolation. Yeah. Yeah. I always you... wonder about like, what, like, why though? <laughs> You've certainly run into the weird stories, though, like people tell like about horrible things in the well, tunnels underneath Disneyland and Disney World. Disney World in Florida also. Has it's just underneath. faster. <laughs> Is it? I guess yeah. so. Um, there, Aaron's parents recently um, learned from some friends of theirs that so so they had some friends who had like a trap door in their basement or like a door in their basement. I don't know if it was a trap door. Uh, and they'd never gone through the door. I don't think I've told this story. Maybe I did. Um, Wait, they they they'd never they'd never gone through the door. They didn't know what the door was for. It was just one of those things that was just there, and they just like you know whatever. It's probably crawl space or whatever. So so they they finally decided maybe when they're getting rid of the silla house, uh, maybe not. Um, but they finally decided to to go through the door to see what's on the other side, and they ended up in their neighbor's basement because <laughs> it was a secret polygamy door. Right. So, so you know, the person who built the tunnel uh, had, you know, multiple wives, presumably, and one of them lived in the next house, and there is that was the tunnel, so that they could practice their polygamy in a way that was uh, more discreet. And the other, their neighbors didn't know about it either. I can't, I can't imagine having a door and not investigating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. How do, how do you how do you have this door and not look through it? Uh, when we it were... could go so many exciting places too. You could find out you have a whole, I don't know. You could find out you have a polygamy door. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we definitely every house we looked at, I opened every door, especially the weird ones going to the attic, because you never know what's sitting. Like, is there like a half finished project in there, or you know, dead body? We have um, polygamists. We... <laughs> So, so our bedroom is right over there. Uh, Chris points to his left, um, <laughs> and uh, so it's it's upstairs in in this sort of loft uh, attic space. Um, and so the bedroom has ceilings like this too, um, not quite as close <laughs> as these two are to me. Um, but uh, so on one end of of uh the room there is a door that opens up into crawl space and on the other end there is two doors that open up into a sort of finished crawl space it has like a carpet in there and you can like use it as storage but the other space is just like you know insulation and whatever but in that closed door crawl space area uh i found a, an old electric typewriter hey like is it the, electric uh maybe it's, it it has it has the little ball um mm-hmm. and so uh so yeah it's a uh, that was a, but it's now uh, inaccessible because we put the we put the bed in front of that door but should we move that bed uh then we can recover the electric typewriter that came with the house <laughs> <laughs> and in my my office is supposed to be a bedroom and it has a closet 
And it actually used to connect to the closet in the adjacent room. So you could walk through. You could walk through the closet. The closet to get to the other room, Uh which we were like, that's fun. Um, Oh, like the old polygamous closet. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's um, where the that's where the the what is it uh three minutes of heaven room is is that closet <laughs> is, it, is it three minutes into like 30 seconds minutes. i think it's yeah. seven yeah no yeah um, i think 30 seconds is a lot more realistic <laughs> for the age group that that game is played <laughs> also true if any heaven is attained at all <laughs> um but then we built a murphy bed and now it's blocked off it's like just closet which is less exciting but mm. I think Robin was more worried about me playing weird pranks and jumping out and scaring people because I was very like thrilled by the concept of just like really creeping people out in that room. <laughs> and he didn't lean into that. Come on, Robin. Well, no, because I think he's worried that he would be the <laughs> I would be the culprit and he would be the one being frightened. <laughs> I mean, still though. <laughs> right? It's good, good feed, time. Into, feed into that creativity. <laughs> Yeah, guest room took precedent. It's okay. Bye. <laughs> I, I am disappointed on your behalf. There is like a weird attic space above my room, which we need to explore more. It's like very part insulated, but mm. like maybe we could build it into something. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, that's a future project idea. That's not a this year project idea. <laughs> That's so how I feel about the upstairs. Like eventually I'm going to do something up here. So well, first thing are not... we're going to frame that Atlantis poster. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, the problem, know. With, the problem with, with this space, I, I, I really do like the walls. Like, you know, we like, we like like spaces like this where it's like, and most people like, I think freak out about stuff like this. This is actually less um, of a desirable uh, house than we think probably it should have been because it's in a very uh, nice neighborhood. It was, um, you know, like it had all the same things as a lot of the places that we were looking at. Um, but uh, it has this upstairs with these things, and it also doesn't have central air. It has a swamp cooler back there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, does not, the rest not... of the house have central air? Mm-hmm. Okay. But the swamp cooler is right above the stairs, and the stairs are stacked, and the the stairs going upstairs are open. So the so, like mm-hmm. it it does a pretty good job of keeping most of the place pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it didn't. It wasn't as in demand as we expected it to be, and um, we've seen this before in other places that also have weird sort of attic spaces that have been finished because I guess the slanty walls freak people out but like we really like it but like it does limit your options if i wanted to like put decoration on the wall of some kind like i can't hang the the like pictures the prints that i had behind me in the other place i could like you know tape stuff if i wanted to do that but if i wanted to be a little bit classier i more limited. Your, your tape days are gone and that's yeah fine. right yeah <laughs> The, day, the days of papering my walls with with magazine posters probably ended when I left my my home from high school. Of course, flash forward two weeks from now and you're just like, yeah, just totally just like collaging the walls. All, all yeah. the pinups of Brett Michaels and uh, <laughs> you're like, I'm just making this space my own. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And Sebastian Bach, I definitely need to revisit those days. <laughs> So uh, you you hinted that you might have a, a topic for us uh, this week. What uh, what what is the topic for the week? Um, I well, it's kind of like two sparring topics, so Excellent. you can each that's have even, one. That's even better. Yeah. Um, fight over them. Yeah. One is pathogenesis. Pathogenesis. And the other one is salutogenesis. Salutogenesis. Chris, yeah. pick your poison. Salute. <laughs> well first i need to spell them so i have pathogenesis is uh p-a-t-h-o-g-e-n-e-s-i-s yes okay and salutogenesis i'm assuming is s-a-l-u-t-o and then genesis yes okay. and right. they're opposites 
they're not opposites. They're not necessarily opposites, but they are like a versus. They okay. aren't allies, I would say. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. Because saluto <laughs> oh, is no. is what you say in Italian when you're saying cheers. <laughs> saluto. So saluto genesis is quite obviously the the genesis the creation of a toast it is how you formulate a toast um and and so if they are op if they are opposing forces uh i would say that salutogenesis is uh formulating a toast at maybe like a, a baby shower or a wedding or some sort of beginning of things Whereas pathogenesis being the opposing factor is how you would toast someone at a wake or a funeral or something is how you would, uh, like craft... more of a tribute. Toast yes, exactly. Right. It's, it's how you would craft that, that, uh, you know, uh, that speech. Gary. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think that's a valiant attempt, honestly. <laughs> uh, as, as is my custom, I will break the words apart and come to the wrong conclusion. Yeah, that's a so, good, that's a good idea. <laughs> so Genesis, of course, is the start, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we covered right? that. But but you're talking about like at a wake, like the the saluto <laughs> saluto Genesis is the um um wait no it was the creation of a. Saluto Genesis. Saluto Genesis is when you're crafting a toast that you would give at the, oh, at, at, okay. a, at a beginning sort of event, at, at a wedding or a baby shower or uh, something. Patho yeah, something. That, and pathogenesis is is when you're crafting a toast uh, or or a a speech that you would give at at an ending sort of event. Okay, so in both cases, the the root relationship is that you're creating. Some sort of some sort of speech, yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. I'm totally spun around now in my head. <laughs> <laughs> because in your case, there's like the double creation, like I don't know. <laughs> um well patho. So would a birthday be pathogenesis or salutogenesis? Uh I would say a birthday would be <laughs> Hmm. That's a good, that's a good, I, okay. So, so a birthday would be salutogenesis. However, that's only because we celebrate birthdays at the end of completing that year, right? Like you don't celebrate your first no. birthday on, on the day that you were born. You celebrate your first oh. birthday after having completed a year. So technically uh, a birthday speech should be pathogenesis because it's actually at the conclusion of the year, but in fact, it is the beginning of the next year, so it's actually salutogenesis. Wow. So that I was, could even come up with some fancy footwork. I could even come up with a bullshit answer <laughs> to, that is overly complex and yet still makes sense to some degree about this bullshit thing that I just created. Yeah. Pretty compelling. Yeah. Pretty compelling. Um, I would say um, that this has not helped me in any way shape or form <laughs> crafting my answer. Patho, uh -huh. uh, I would say pathological, right? Sure, sure. You could say that. Salutological isn't a thing, so I'm a little, <laughs> little lost here. But then maybe I should back up and say maybe it's not pathological. Maybe it's literally like path, like a route way to get somewhere so similar to your idea mm -hmm. pathogenesis is uh creating a set of directions or a policy or procedures okay salutogenesis is um in hindsight capturing those the steps you took okay oh. okay so salutogenesis is likely going to be more accurate pathogenesis is more optimistic so the genesis is pessimistic. So 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 uh, let's let's bring it to something uh, completely uh, uh, irrelevant and unnecessary. Um, well, you already have, but go on. 
if we put these into uh, agile framework terms. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yeah, I love this. Pathogenesis would represent the sort of sprint planning, the planning phase, or, or maybe the road mapping phase of a project, whereas yeah. salutogenesis would represent the retrospective part of the, of the process or the sprint. So as, as you are, you're documenting. Yeah, why not? Sure. From the end, documenting like where, how we got to where we are. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that convinced of my answer. I'm not, <laughs> just not willing to like jump in whole hog and confirm. It's just, it's yeah. What you, what you described matches what I was trying to suggest, <laughs> which is wrong. Sure. <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we have reached that time already uh, mm -hmm. to find out what uh, what these words actually mean. Don't forget, we spent the first third of the show in space. So That's true. Well, we're all actually still in space. Yeah. I wish I was more in space. More in space. As I gaze wistfully out the window at the sky. <laughs> have you, I mean, I imagine you must have, but have you read a lot of Ray Bradbury? Actually, not as much as you'd think. No. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I feel like uh, you might really dig it. I, uh, when given the option of um, a book I can read, I often find myself going to like NASA history. I don't know how many more books I can stand though in NASA history. I feel like I've, like a lot of times I'm like, I, I know this story already. <laughs> sort of where I am, you know? Anyway, um, Here we are. pathogenesis You're just building up the suspense, I think. Yeah, da, da, da. pathogenesis is the treatment of disease, mm -hmm. and salutogenesis is the creation of health. So, one treats the thing that's wrong, and the other one is basically like the things you can do to contribute to good health. Oh, well, that's nice. It does feel like a fun partnership. So with salutogenesis, you're saying saluto to health. Well, it, <laughs> when you were talking about creating, I was like, oh, and it's like when you're saying when you're cheering, you're usually it's like good health, right? Yeah, so I right. Was like, oh, I was like, they're actually like closer than you'd think. You're just waiting for me to make that connection of, of good health and, and good health. We would have been waiting a while. Uh, yeah, no, that was <laughs> never going to happen. The six hour podcast version. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, did I tell you all we got fiber internet? Oh, yeah. you did. Good. Yeah. How yeah. could you have ever lived without it? Uh, I made it a lot of years without. Um, made it a lot of years without. Who's your? I mean, is it like some local provider, or is it? Or it is. is it's this your... company called Windstream. Okay. Um, and they do like very rural phone service, so heavily subsidized, and you drive out into the farmlands and. Like they're the telephone line. So yeah, I'm sure they're running on old, old AT&T copper. I don't know how any of that works, but, uh, or how they, you, I don't think, think, well, I mean, I guess you, mm, I guess you could do copper for over the long distances, but you'd still need to have some sort of a, uh, an access point that is fast enough to, to do fiber to the, to the home. Yeah. I don't know where that, where it terminates around here, but, uh, when they came to install it, like a guy came with a cherry picker truck and then another pickup truck. And I'm like, oh, this is a thing. Uh, and he comes and knocks on the door and he's like, we actually already have a line run into your house. Can I see what it terminates into? Mm. And the house was already set up for it. Already wired. So literally he was like, let's let's follow this Cat5 cable all the way to where my cable modem is hooked up. And he's like, can we just plug in your router? Yeah. And your life. That was easy. Uh, nice. Yeah. 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 Was, our, I, uh, this place, um, we had Google Fiber at the old house. This place already had Google Fiber hooked up. Um, Google Fiber, so Google's not the best at their documentation. Uh, and when I moved, I, I contacted support and I said, I want to transfer service because there's no actual like process to move service other than to talking to support. Um, and they said something at the end to the effect of um, when you are at the new place, you'll need to let us know so that we can turn on something, something, something. And, and I'm like, okay, fine. Um, so we get to the new place and I plug everything in. I'm like, oh, we already have internet. Okay, great. 
And then I got an email from Google that says, here's what you need to do to set up your new service. And it was really vague on, like it was all the setup stuff that that we've already done, like plug in your thing and make sure it's working and get the Google Home app and like connect all your access points and all that stuff. And it was really vague on, on like the after that part. Um, so I never contacted the, uh, I never contacted Google. Um, oh, we should have left it. I never contacted the Google. And when Not that sentence structure, <laughs> when uh, my so my son over the weekend downloaded the new update for Rainbow Six, uh, and it was like fifty gigabytes, and he's downloading this and complaining about how slow it is. And I'm looking at download speeds and estimated times. He's like, it's gonna take like it's gonna take days. And it should have taken like a half hour. I'm like, that's that's ridiculous. That that, that you know, no, nothing is that fast for 50 gigs. Surely I've done internet support, like nothing is that fast. Um and I didn't I you know went on to a download calculator was, this is what your speed is now and this is how long it's gonna take and it's a really big file. So like whatever. Um but it wasn't until we tried to watch something while he was downloading stuff like on Netflix that I realized, hey, maybe there's something to this being too slow thing. Um, and then I started doing like looked in my speed test history to see what we had historically mm. gotten on Google Fiber. And it was like, you know, a hundredfold, 200, 300 yeah. fold less than what we should have been getting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I had to contact uh, Google Fiber and they just like said, OK, you're done. Um, <laughs> like, like flip, flip like, the switch, turned it on, whatever. I don't know. Uh, and now we're back up. But I guess like the Google Fiber ports are live. Um, so because like initially when they were selling it, they're like, oh, yeah, there's free Internet um, at like basically DSL speeds. Yes, I remember that. Um, yeah. And then they just stopped advertising it. And I don't think they ever turned that off because I think that if you do go into a, Google, a home with a Google Fiber Jack that you can just plug in and get DSL speeds. That that's what I've learned from this process, and you and just have internet for for free. Well, but, not uh, for free. But you have the cost of the internet is providing Google access to everything. Okay. Do. Yes. That that old thing. <laughs> yeah, that old I, thing. We had to change. So, like our old provider was the cable company. So they had like a like there's you know we had like a TV app that came mm -hmm. with them, Spectrum. And uh, so we're, we're not going to have that. I like Spectrum, Spectrum and Sling. I'm like, well, I need to have something because like there's enough that the kids want to watch that requires like normal TV, um, which like whatever. Uh, so I'm like, all right, well, it looks like Google TV is my choice. Uh, so I signed for Google TV and I installed it on the Apple TV and signed in and blah, blah, blah. And then I tried to watch it and it was like, oh, you actually need to enable location services on the app mm -hmm. so that we, so we know what local in the, channels, yeah. yeah. But not the app on the Apple TV, the app on my phone. And I'm like, mm. oh, that ain't happening. Mm -hmm. So there's an old iPad mini I have for just these circumstances that does nothing but validate location. <laughs> <laughs> so, which makes me like eccentric and weird. And I understand that. But I'm also <laughs> like, I, Google doesn't need to know where I am. I don't think it makes you eccentric and weird, though. But every, like everybody yeah, in the world, okay, I guess we have to do. I, just, I, I just, I'm just not okay with that. Like, no, no, I, I'm happy to share my location with the two of you, with, with Rhonda, with friends, but Google can fuck right off with that. <laughs> no, there's no need. Yeah, no, I guess, I guess, I guess allowing uh, location services from your phone would then allow Google to continue to track your phone after you validated your location for the purpose of the Google TV app. Well, it Whereas, seems like you have to validate it every x number of days whereas using your ipad mini that is presumably not mobile and is only staying inside the house is only giving it one point of data which is that's a valid and it's also not associated with anything else that happens right so it's not right. like you know oh now i have this google you know profile and tracking information that they've and it's also been looking at from the device ID that you're using whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yep yeah it's not, occasionally it's not, i look at recipes on there so it's it's, it's gonna not, think i'm like a you know I, I amend my statement in that it, in saying that it is uh, eccentric, it is slightly less eccentric. Well, it's ex I would say I guess it's eccentric by our current standards of where our understanding and and use of privacy is these days. I just miss the anonymous internet, and I miss, or and I and I am disgusted with the Do inherent. You know? Yes, yes. 
we, because there, because coupled with that, there is this like accusation that like you must have been doing something wrong if you wanted the anonymous internet. I no, see. I just don't. Just don't want, want you to, to know my data. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you need, if you want to know, ask. Like, <laughs> I'm happy to tell you all where I am or what my favorite type of cereal is or whatever weird search is. I mean, I don't know. I. I I don't, it's just Google. I don't trust it. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.